Niacinamide, also known as vitamin B3, is a very popular and super awesome skincare active for brightening, boosting barrier performance, decreasing fine lines, and more. If you want to add it to your skincare formulations, keep watching to learn how. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are doing another ingredient deep dive, this time into niacinamide. In this video, we will be covering what niacinamide is, why we use it in our formulations, how to use it, substitution suggestions, and then we'll wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using niacinamide. As always, please think of these ingredient deep dives as the partner video for the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia entry on the same ingredient. The Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia is a completely free online database of ingredient information to help you learn more about your ingredients and become a better formulator. You'll find it over at humblebeeandme.com or linked in the description box below. What is niacinamide? It is a naturally occurring vitamin that plays a role in many important biochemical reactions in our bodies. Niacinamide is an amide derivative of nicotinic acid, which is also known as niacin. Both niacin and niacinamide are referred to as vitamin B3, but we use niacinamide specifically in skincare because niacin causes the skin to flush and tingle, and that's just not super pleasant or desirable. Niacinamide is sold as a white powder, it is synthesized, and it is vegan. Why do we use niacinamide in our formulations? Niacinamide has tons of benefits for the skin. Right now, it seems like the most popular one is skin brightening. According to Modern Cosmetics, niacinamide works to brighten the skin by preventing melanin from passing into keratinocytes, also known as skin cells. Niacinamide is also great for acne-prone skin as it helps regulate sebum production and decrease redness and irritation. This awesome ingredient also helps boost ceramide production, reduce transepidermal water loss, improve barrier function, reduce fine lines, and improve skin elasticity. It is a generally well tolerated active that is unlikely to irritate the skin. If you've never tried niacinamide before and you'd like to give it a go before you invest in some of the raw ingredient, I really like The Ordinary's 10% niacinamide and 1% zinc facial serum. It's quite inexpensive, a 30 ml or one ounce bottle is less than $10, and yeah, I love this product, I've been using it for years, it's a great way to see if your skin loves niacinamide. When you do buy your first bag of niacinamide, I recommend starting with about an ounce or 30 grams. This is enough to make 600 grams of product that includes 5% niacinamide, and that's a good amount of niacinamide in a formulation, and quite a lot of skincare products. How do you work with niacinamide and incorporate it into your formulations. In this section of the video, we will be talking about how much niacinamide to include in your formulations, what a formulation needs in order for niacinamide to be successful in that formulation, and then how to adjust that formulation in order to include the niacinamide. When it comes to how much to use, niacinamide is typically used in about the 2 to 6% range, though I have seen recommendations as low as 0.05% and as high as 10% from different suppliers and sources. Remember that more isn't necessarily better. I usually aim for around 5% depending on the formulation. Because niacinamide is water soluble, whatever formulation you are hoping to include it in needs to include some water. This doesn't necessarily have to be straight distilled water. It could be something like a hydrosol or witch hazel or aloe vera juice, as all those things are almost entirely water. I recommend saving your niacinamide for leave-on skincare formulations, as it's really not gonna do much in a rinse-off formulation that's only on your skin for a few moments. You can include niacinamide in the heated water phase of your formulations, or it can be cold processed if there's no heating going on in the formulation. To make room in the formulation, simply reduce the amount of water. So if you were going to add 5% niacinamide to the formulation, you would reduce the distilled water or the other primary watery thing like a hydrosol or witch hazel by 5% to keep the formulation adding up to 100%. Now, there is quite a lot of discussion about the ideal final pH for formulations including niacinamide. Niacinamide. Most supplier recommendations I've seen are in the 5 to 6 range. You may have read that you should not use niacinamide with acidic ingredients like vitamin C or alpha hydroxy acids because that can cause the niacinamide to break down into niacin and then make the formulation irritating to the skin. Chemists Amanda of Realize Beauty and Stephen of Kind of Stephen have both written really interesting, detailed, well-explained blog posts on this topic. They both conclude that the concerns about using niacinamide in acidic formulations or in using a product that contains niacinamide in the same skincare routine as an acidic product like a vitamin C serum are probably overstated and based on a not great interpretation of a study that used hydrochloric acid and high heat. I highly recommend reading both of these posts to learn more. There's a lot of great information in there. They're both linked in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia entry for this ingredient, 
Plus, I've also linked to some discussion over on Chemist's Corner that generally draws the same conclusions. The general gist of why we don't need to worry about niacinamide in acidic skincare formulations is that the reaction would take a really long time, a lot longer than you typically leave a skincare product sitting around. Also, the acids that we use in skincare products are nowhere near as strong as hydrochloric acid. From my research, it seems like a pH of 4.5 to 6 should be fine and potentially even lower would be okay depending on the formulation. Once your formulation is nearly done, you are going to want to check that pH and adjust it if it's not in a skin happy range. Skin Chakra has some great posts on how to do this and I've also done a patron exclusive video all about this, so if you'd like to check that out, please consider becoming a $10 and up patron. I do recommend having a digital pH meter rather than just pH strips if you're formulating with niacinamide. And that's pretty much it. Make sure there is some water in the formulation, reduce some of that water to create space for the niacinamide, and then make sure that the pH is in a skin happy range of about 4.5 to 6. What can you use instead of niacinamide? If you need to substitute niacinamide in a formulation, there's no easy one for one, this ingredient does pretty much the same thing alternative. So the first thing you're going to want to do is think about what the niacinamide is doing in the formulation that you are swapping it out in. You know, what is, what is the big key thing that the niacinamide is doing and then you're going to want to look for ingredients that also do that job. You may need to blend a couple of different ingredients together to approximate the jobs that niacinamide was doing and you'll almost certainly have to do a bit of redevelopment work and testing to end up somewhere that you're happy. N-acetylglucosamine is a good alternative for replacing the brightening benefits of niacinamide. As a side note, if you are interested in skin brightening, a combination of niacinamide and N-acetylglucosamine has been shown to be more effective than niacinamide alone. Vitamin C could also work as an alternative skin brightening ingredient. There are quite a lot of different formats of vitamin C and some are easier to formulate with than others. So make sure you are researching what you've got and what you're looking at so that you know that you can make it work with whatever you are formulating. Panthenol, also known as vitamin B5, can be a good alternative for anti-inflammatory properties and reducing transepidermal water loss. Certain botanical extracts could also be beneficial. For instance, pea extract is said to help even out the skin tone and help with dark spots. So that could be a good alternative, or you could look at something like calendula extract as it has anti-inflammatory and skin soothing benefits. This is by no means an exhaustive list of alternatives. You'll need to do your own research, testing and experimenting to see what works for you and your formulation. And let's wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using niacinamide. Formulation number one is my brightening hyaluronic acid and niacinamide facial serum. This is a fairly simple serum formulation featuring 5% niacinamide and hyaluronic acid. It's easy to make and includes a small amount of xanthan gum to give it a bit of body so it doesn't feel too watery. Formulation number two is my brightening gel serum. This formulation is easy to make but the ingredient list is fairly advanced. This cheery yellow formulation features skincare goodies like ceramides, N-acetylglucosamine, allantoin, niacinamide, panthenol, and hyaluronic acid. It's cold processed and is lovely for moisturizing, brightening, and boosting barrier performance. Formulation number three is my moisturizing repair cream. I was inspired to create this formulation by La Roche-Posay's Cicaplast Mains hand cream. Not only does it contain 4% niacinamide, but it also has a whopping 30% of vegetable glycerin, which can be kind of controversial, but I love it. And many other bees that have made it have reported great results as well. Formulation number four is my Skin Brightening Toner Mist. This formulation pairs niacinamide and N-acetylglucosamine with some great humectants for a brightening, hydrating, slightly astringent facial mist. I adore facial mists in the summer. So if you haven't made this yet or a facial mist in general, now is a great time. And my last niacinamide formulation for you is my natural oil-free turmeric facial lotion. Niacinamide teams up with bright yellow turmeric extract and some of my favorite natural ingredients for a lightweight, all natural, oil-free face lotion with brightening and anti-inflammatory benefits. If you'd like to learn how to make my brightening hyaluronic acid and niacinamide serum, click here. And if you'd like to check out the brightening face mist that pairs niacinamide with N-acetylglucosamine, click here. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.